I don't know if you can actually tell how much that tree is leaning. But the tree, if I point right there, running up, is supposed to be the same height as the tree right next to it, running that way. Okay, so I know I've showed people this before. I'm gonna show this to you again that as you can see, my peach trees are just loaded. It is crazy how many peaches are on this tree. Now, the bad thing about that is, is that the tree is overloaded. The whole tree is bent over. It's nearly about to collapse. And it's just simply because of the fruit load, the weight. There's probably 500 fruits on this tree. So, you can see here that the tree is leaning over the fence. It's supposed to be standing upright. And you can see that here's another one that's not le leaned over like that. And actually there's another one back there that's also not leaned over. But I have the same problem on all these trees. There's just way too many fruits on them. So to kind of give you some tips that usually after your last frost date, you want to wait a couple of weeks and then you want to go out and you want to thin these. And to kind of give you an example, you want one fruit every six inches. Now, Sometimes you can get limbs like this one. This limb is probably barely six inches. It's got one, two, three, four, five, five fruit, six fruits on that one branch right there. And I'm going to have to reduce it down to just one. Some of these longer branches, you know, like this one, you'll just have to take and pick. And usually what I do is I look at the fruit. I try to tell is the fruit damaged, if the fruit's damaged, it's obviously not going to stay. Um, the six inches apart though, you can take like this one, generally six inches is if you go like this and kind of stretch your first finger and your thumb, that's usually about six inches. You can see, so that first fruit is six inches. You can see there, from that there, there's a fruit here and a fruit there and a fruit there. So which one would I want to keep? This one here looks really tiny where that one looks a little bit bigger. And this is kind of like the decision you're going to have to make all the way down there. But you got to thin this out. If you don't, you could end up damaging the tree. I mean, you can tell it's strained a lot right now. So you have to do this. If you don't, what's going to happen is you're going to end up breaking the limbs. You're going to break the main trunk. Or the fruit is not going to grow much bigger than what it already is because the tree has to try to make all this fruit grow when it just simply can't support this many fruits. Um, the other thing is too, by thinning the fruit, you're going to guarantee that they're going to be bigger and they're going to be sweeter because the tree can devote all of its energy into just ripening the fruit that's left on the tree. So generally, all that you really need to do this is a ladder and a bucket. The bucket is what I put, the five gallon bucket is what I put the fruit that I take off into. And normally I would need a ladder, but this is leaning over. I can, I can literally touch <laughs> this top branch. So, but as I start to thin the fruit, the tree will start to stand back upright. So I do have a ladder out here for that reason. You want to be careful when you're working on a ladder, obviously. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up in a way that you can see me do this. And I'm going to start thinning this fruit. You can see some deer damage right here on the end of this. So that's another reason why I don't want to let this stay like this. 
The deer generally don't bother the peaches at this age, but they will the tips of the branches. You can see almost all the tips of the branches have been ate off. But what I want to do is reduce the fruit. If I don't, I'm not going to have any harvest this year. Now I'll have to do the other red tree over there. It also has a huge fruit load on it. But that tree is a little more stronger and a little taller. And it probably has just as many fruit on it. Um, it's just able to handle the load better, but I'm still going to thin it out to about six inches per fruit One other thing I want to talk about is how you need to remove this fruit Let's take this cluster right here, and I'm just going to show you you have Technically this direction is up the limb because this is the end of the branch here <laughs> And then it's been over and going up so think of it like that is up and that way is down even though but you know it kind of looks like it's actually up it's technically going back into the main trunk so up is technically this way so what i do generally is i start with the last fruit i want to look at it make sure it's not damaged it's not damaged i then want to find my six inch point i want to find the next fruit that i'm going to keep which is going to be in this cluster up here so i'm going to actually remove these two might actually be three there. What you want to do, move this leaf out of the way, you want to pull toward the end of the branch while twisting the fruit at the same time. So you don't want to pull down, you want to pull up toward the end and twist at the same time. See that? Again, I'm pulling toward the end of the branch and twisting at the same time. You, try, you want to try to not damage the leaves. So now I'm six inches away. I have to make a decision for this. What I want to do is I want to look at the fruit because if there's any fruit that's damaged, I want to pull it off right away. Now what I've got here is I've got a cluster of various sizes. So what I want to do is just pick one. I think I'm going to keep the one that's on the bottom here and get rid of these other ones. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to twist and pull. This is kind of hard to do one-handed. Never done this while recording a video. Twist and pull. Twist and pull. I got another one there I got to get. Again, I'm twisting toward the end of the branch. Now, the reason why you're putting these in a bucket is all this fruit that you pull off isn't good for anything other than the compost pile. So then I go six more inches and just keep going. So I'm going to put this into a time lapse and you can watch me do the rest of this. So as you could see during that time-lapse video, I kind of hope that it showed up that the tree started standing up on its own as I removed a lot of that excess fruit load. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to worry about removing too much. You don't have to worry about removing too little. You just want to reduce the fruit load. You want the fruit to be spaced about every six inches. If there are limbs like this that are really short and it had a fruit on it, sometimes I take it off depending on the length of the limb. This limb right here, when this, it's right at the, the fruit's right at the very end, the limb's only about this long, it'll probably support that fruit. But if you take a really long limb, like if this right here had a fruit here at the very end, it's going to cause that limb to bend down 
when that fruit gets full size and it's not going to be able to support it and it's just going to break off and you're not going to get the fruit anyways so the other thing that is kind of like the deal right now is that it rained earlier today and this tree's probably a little softer than what it should be but i did get a lot of the fruit off of there now you'll see up here it still looks like there's a lot of fruit but what that is is that is where you have fruit on separate short limbs and just to kind of show you what i removed that is it i don't know how many that is but that's a whole lot and i still have the other one left to do so let me get started on that one over there and uh thanks for watching i don't think i'm gonna record that one i'm just gonna do it i might do a follow-up but as always god bless you God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.